Okay, in this video, we're going to look at improving this line following robot and taking it to the next level. Um, this time, we're actually going to modify the robot just a little bit. We're going to add two color sensors on the front instead of one color sensor. This way, the robot is getting more data in which for it to make its decision on how to follow the line. And this should hopefully make it more accurate. Now, before, when we had a single sensor, we only had two possibilities. The sensor could be on the black, or the sensor could be on the white. Now we're going to have three different possibilities. We could have that sensor on the black, or we could have that sensor on the black, or we could have neither sensor on the black, where both sensors are on the white. So there's three different possibilities now, instead of two different possibilities. So we're going to have to learn how to build a three-way switch instead of a two-way switch. Um, a, bit, bit, a big thing to remember when setting up the robot is that the space in between the two sensors needs to be a little bit wider than the road. If they're quite close together, they'll keep bumping the black line all the time making the robot turn. If you do have them too far apart, it does mean that the robot can drift quite a long way before it senses that it's getting offline and having to come back. So we need that balance between they're not too tight and they're not too far apart. Some are about where I got where I am at the moment. So because we want to know whenever we're going to sense the, the black line, we need to know the values of what the calibration on the sensors are going to be. So again, just like previously, we're going to go to, across till we get to the sensor menu, which is that menu just there. Then we're going to click on the very first option, port view. We're going to go to there. Now what it's telling me in port 1, while it's sitting over the white, it gets 100%. When I press the across button to go across the ports, that's port 2, which nothing's in, port 3, that's nothing in. When I go to port 4, it tells me port 4 only reads about 80 to 81% when it's on the white. So you notice that the two different sensors give a different reading. That's because the calibration of the sensors is different. We won't get in in this video how to recalibrate the sensors. We'll just use the values that they are. But you need to be aware of that, that the calibration will change and you will get different readings. So we know the left one reads 100 when it's on the white, and the right one only reads 80 when it's on the white. Okay, let's have a look at the code. Same as before, there's a loop block set to infinity, so it goes around and around and around. Inside this loop block, we have to build a three-way switch, unlike our first robot, which only had a two-way switch. To build a three-way switch, you do it by putting a switch inside a switch. So the first switch tests the left sensor. If the left sensor is on black, then it comes up to the top and it turns left. If, the left sen if it's false and the left sensor isn't on the black, then it comes down to the bottom switch. And the bottom switch tests to see if the right sensor is on the black. If the right sensor is on the black, then it goes up the top and turns right. If the right sensor isn't on the black, then it goes down the bottom and goes straight ahead. So what you can see is there's three possibilities. It can turn left, it can turn right, it can go straight ahead. It can only go straight ahead if it's been false for the left sensor to be on black and the right sensor to be on black, then it'll come down the bottom. So what we need to do, we'll now have a look at uh, the exact settings for these switches and these steering blocks. All right, the first switch we are going to set to test on the color sensor to compare light intensity. And we want it to be smaller than, fractionally smaller than the value we got with the white. So on the left sensor, we tested before we read from the port view, it said that it read 100% when it was on its white. So we're going to say any time it's less than 95, then it must be on the black. We won't say less than 100, because if we get any noise or any sort of bumping around, we could accidentally get a false positive where it thinks it's on its black when it's not. So we're going to say when, it's, when the left sensor is less than 95, we come up to the top and turn right. Now, the, when it comes down to the bottom, the other one is set very similar. Where the bottom switch we're going to set to color sensor, compare light intensity to be smaller than 75. Because when we did our port view for the right sensor, 
we found on the white it said 80. So any time it's smaller than 75, it must be on the black. All right, so looking at how we're going to set the three motors. All three motors will be set to be turned on. All three motors will be set for 30 power. All three motors will be set for the same ports, A and D, and that's because for my robot, the left motor's plugged in port A and the right motor's plugged in port B. And what we're going to have is if the, is if the very top one is testing the left sensor, if the left sensor is on black, then we need to turn left. The next one down that's testing the right sensor, if the right sensor is on the black, it needs to turn right. If neither of them are, they're going to go straight ahead. Now how much we turn will depend upon your particular robot. I did some testing and I found I need to turn by about 52. If I turn less than 52, he falls off the line. If I turn more than 52, I'm turning tighter than what I need to, and it means the robot's doing more turning than what it needs to. Again, you'll have to do your own testing and find out what number it is. And it's always a case of, if the robot's falling off the line, make him turn tighter. If the robot's doing a lot of turning, but not falling off the line, you can try making him turn a little bit less. Okay, now we're going to do some testing where we're going to test this two sensor um, controlled robot against our single sensor proportional controller and our single sensor on off controller. I'll put the proportional controller in the bottom left hand side of the screen and I'll put the on off controller in the top right hand part of the screen. All three robots are using 30 motor speed. So they all have their motors turning at the same speed. The only difference between them is the control system we're using to drive the robots.